Let's get started. How's everyone doing? Doing good? Cool. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much today. Weather. All right, today we're gonna to be talking about logarithms and their derivatives, as you can see. Uh, but first some announcements. So there's homework due on Monday. As a reminder, it's gonna cover uh, exponential functions, logarithms, and it's gonna cover related rates, which we're gonna take all of Thursday and Friday to talk about, okay? Related rates are great. They are mostly story problems. I know students can hate those, but they're great. They're a great application of what we've talked about. Very interesting application. Okay, so just so you know, that's what Thursday and Friday are going to be. Uh, don't forget about the MEC uh, on the, if you ever can't make it to my office hours, you can always drop in on the MEC virtually uh, and get help with homework uh, in any of your, well, in most of your math classes, uh, you can stop by and, and get help uh, on homework or just in general, it doesn't even have to be homework, I think. So, <clears throat> and then all the exams are graded. I uploaded the solutions to Canvas. I had to fiddle with that right before class, so I took it down, I think. You might have seen them before. I'm gonna put them back up. Canvas has been very weird with my slides recently, uh, so this is stupid. That's the takeaway. Admit. Okay, so uh, overall, again, I was pretty pleased with the exams. If you were unhappy with your score, just come talk to me and I can, uh, you know, we'll talk about why I graded certain problems the way I did. And uh, um, yeah, we can go from there. Any questions about any of these announcements? Okay. All right, so last time we learned how to differentiate something that looked like f of x equals e to the really anything. You can differentiate anything that looks like e to most any function of x. Okay, so here's uh, some funky new graph that you can now analyze. You can figure out what the slope of the tangent line is to that curve at any point. You can find its derivative, which is exactly the same thing as what I just said, but you can find its derivative as a function of its, uh, of its, of its own right. Uh, we later we'll learn how to even sketch this graph by hand. That's kind of a, always a big part of a calculus class is a curve sketching uh, section. And uh, it will uh, it all falls back on the derivative and then just a handful of, of other topics. Okay, so. Let's actually differentiate this function. Let's find the equation of the tangent line to the curve <coughs> of the function uh, e to the negative one over one plus x squared at x equals negative one. So coming back here, uh, that means I'm finding this tangent line. Tangent. Now extend it a little bit. Beautiful. That looks great. Good job, Chase. What a fantastic tangent line. Okay, so we're finding that tangent line. So what two things do I need to find the equation of any line? I need a slope and I need point on the line. All right, we'll do the point on the line is always the quote unquote easiest Part. So uh, what is a point on this line, or at least the, the x coordinate of a point on this line? Careful, look closer. Oh, negative. Yeah, negative one, perfect. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, perfect, so negative one, and then how do I get the actual y coordinate uh, for the point on the line? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's kind of the only thing you can do is plug in negative one into that function, right? So when I plug in negative one in here, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to get e to the negative one over one plus negative one 
squared, right? So this is the same thing as negative one comma e to the negative one half. Yeah. Do what? There's a negative there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, though, for pointing that out. No, I misspeak a lot. I'm actually thinking of making it a policy where, like, if you correct me and you correctly correct me, then I'll, I'll give you some bonus points somewhere. But I haven't flushed that out yet. But that could be a thing. But yes, I always, I, I misspeak all the time. Definitely, if you think I'm doing something wrong, let me know. But in this case, I was not misspeaking. So this, <laughs> this point is uh, negative one e to the negative one half. Okay, so now all we need is the slope. And what is the slope of the tangent line? The derivative. That's exactly right. I always, anytime I say slope, I'm, I, you might as well just say derivative. They're the same thing. I need f prime and f prime where? Negative one. Perfect. F prime and negative one. So, I need to differentiate this thing. I first will find f prime of x. Well, f of x is a composition, right? It's, it's a big funky composition. So uh, there's an outside function and an inside function. We'll look at what's the inside function. Close. Uh, the e is actually going to be the outside function because the the outside function is going to be e to the x. The inside function you always look at what what's the like what's the first thing that you do to x. So the first thing I do is I square x, right? Then I add one. Then I take the negative reciprocal, and we can call all of that the inside function. If you want, you can have multiple chain rules. But you want to make, yeah, you want to make the inside function the biggest possible inside function to avoid doing the chain rule several times. Okay, so this is my inside function right there. Negative one over one plus x squared. My outside function is just e to that stuff. Okay. So <clears throat> I need to differentiate both of these. Both of these derivatives show up when I take the derivative of the composition. So we'll do the easy one. What's the derivative of the outside? Yes, e to the x. E to the x is its own derivative. It's why it's my favorite function. Okay. What's the derivative of the inside? Well, careful. We can rewrite this as a 2x is definitely going to show up. We can rewrite that as that, right? So I can use the chain rule or the quotient rule either way. But if I use the quotient rule, well, this is low and d high is zero minus high d low. <clears throat> so that's gonna give me my two uh, x, but then I need to divide by the square of what's below, right? Divided by one plus x squared. So this was just the quotient rule. Low d high minus high d low over the square of what's below. Can you just read it like that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and so from there, f prime of x is equal to, well, I take the derivative of the outside and I evaluate it at the inside. So e to the negative one over one plus x squared. And, I evaluate, and then I multiply that by the derivative of the inside so times two x over one plus x squared squared. Okay. 
if you want, you can put eat that stuff all. Yeah. The two X on top. Well, no, because the minus when I do minus high, I'll do minus minus one and then times the derivative of the bottom. So that, that should be positive. But thank you for keeping me in check. We have a question in the chat. Yes, derivative, yes. Okay, so then from here, I'm just plugging in one and it looks, or sorry, negative one. And I know it looks uh, funky, but you know, it's, it's just gonna be a number with some with an e in it but that's still just a number so i'm going to get e to the negative one half still when i plug in negative one in up here and then times two times negative one times two times negative one all divided by well one plus negative one squared so that's just going to be one and then i do another square double square if you will <clears throat> so this is then equal to well that's going to give me negative two e to the minus one half divided by two squared scientists say that that is four or in other words negative one half e to the negative one half beautiful science Okay, so there's my slope. My point was right here. So I can write everything down. I can write down this equation for this line. Y minus, remember point slope form is my go-to. And I'm gonna ask on the exams usually for you to write it in point slope form because I think it's so much easier to do. So Y minus E to the minus one half equals m the slope negative one half negative one half e to the negative one half times x minus minus one gives me x plus one and you're done no need to fuss with that anymore yeah Uh, because that that's coming from uh, from here. That's coming from the point. <laughs> gotcha. Yep, it happens. Okay, so that was a nice a uh, little bit more than a warm up to remind us what we learned yesterday. Okay. So today we're going to talk about logarithms, kind of the opposite, not kind of, they are the opposite of exponential functions, okay? Logarithms and exponential functions undo each other. In calculus, we're most interested in the natural logarithm. There are other logarithms. Um, I'm not going to talk about those. The, it's just more stuff for you to memorize, I feel like. So we're only going to talk about the natural logarithm in here. Um, if you want to learn about other logarithms, I can tell you it's not that much different, but uh, we're only talking about natural logarithms today and for the rest of the class. Okay, so the natural logarithm satisfies a few special properties, and you can get these by looking at the corresponding properties for exponential functions. And I would encourage you to do that. I think it's a fun little exercise. Uh, so natural logs and logarithms in general satisfy the following. If I take the natural log of a product, then I get the natural log of X. So I'm taking the natural log of X times Y, X and Y are real numbers. I'll get natural log of X plus the natural log of Y. So natural logs turn multiplication into addition. Okay. Note, this only holds if Oops. Uh, this only holds if x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero. Because if x or y is less than zero, well, they both have to be less than zero for this to hold. But then I'm trying to take the natural log of a negative, negative number 
and you can't do that. You can only plug in positive numbers into the logarithm. Okay. So you can use this fact to get what I'm about to write, and we actually saw this yesterday. This is kind of how, how we got the derivative of all exponential functions, is we use the fact that the natural log of x to the n is equal to n times the natural log of x. Note, again, this only holds if x is greater than 0. Okay. And then really, you could use to prove this last one, you can use those first two in combination to say the natural log of x divided by y is the natural log of x minus the natural log of y. And again, this only holds if x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero. So I mentioned these things because sometimes you'll be looking at the derivative of a logarithm of a product of stuff. And it's going to be way easier to first use these rules to write the function in a simpler way and then differentiate. Okay. Are there any questions about any of these rules? Okay, so like I said last time, the natural logarithm is I'm not sure if I said this explicitly, but the natural log is the inverse function of f of x equals e to the x. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to use that fact and something we've done before to find the derivative of the natural logarithm. We're going to do that right now. Okay. So I'm going to let y equal the natural log of x. Then our job, we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x, right? Okay, we don't know how to do that yet. We do know how to find derivatives of e to the x. So what could I do here to move some stuff around so that I have an e to the x showing up. Or maybe an e, maybe not an e to the x, but an e to the something. We got something in the chat. Is it the right answer? Yes, WTF stands for for me, uh, it stands for want to find. I think it's a funny joke, but I can stop making the joke if you guys want. Um, <clears throat> so looking at y equals the natural log of x, I know e to the x and natural log of x undo each other. So I'm going to use that fact to rewrite this. I'm just going to put an e under both of these. Okay, So that still makes... I did the same thing to both sides. This equality is still true. And when you do that, you're going to get, well, e to the natural log of x, that just becomes x equals e to the y. Okay. Now, who knows what we're going to do next? Yeah, now I can just take the derivative. I'm going to use implicit differentiation, which is just the chain rule. But that's exactly right. Now I know how to differentiate everything in here. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of this. So d dx of this, d dx of this. So we'll do the right-hand side first. What's the derivative with respect to x of x? It's 1, right? Was one. All right, e to the y is technically, if I'm taking the derivative of with respect to x of e to the y, that's technically a chain rule problem again, right? So the outside function, outside, inside, 
the inside function is just y. The outside function is e to the x. Okay. Again, this is just implicit differentiation. I'm just writing out more explicitly than, than normal. So I need to take the derivative with respect to x of both of these. Well, the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is 1. e to the x, perfect. <clears throat> And the derivative with respect to x of y is exactly what we're trying to find, right? I just write that down. I don't know what it is, it's what we're trying to find. So the derivative with respect to x of y is just dy dx. So the left-hand side, when I take the derivative, becomes, well, I want the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside. So that's just e to the y, and then times the derivative of the inside times dy dx. Did I leave myself some room? Yes, I did. So this tells me dy dx is equal to 1 over e to the y. But what is e to the y? Yes, e to the y was just x. Remember what we did, what we did right here. First thing, e to the y is just x. So this is just the same thing as 1 over x. Okay. So writing it out all the way, we've just shown that the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of x is equal to 1 over x. Okay. Any questions about anything I did back here? Okay. So this lets us, uh, let me rewrite it here. Uh, now we know how to differentiate most of the functions you're going to see in the wild. Uh, exponentials and logarithms were sort of the last thing that you were kind of missing to be able to, for me to just give you any function and you'd be able to differentiate it. Okay, so at the end of the class today, I, I think we're definitely going to get to it. We're going to differentiate a very, very weird function that doesn't look like we know how to differentiate it, but using what we know we're going to rewrite it and we can differentiate this weird thing and most anything with a little bit of ingenuity okay so but let's get some practice just with the differentiating natural logs so let's uh first differentiate the following functions f of x is equal to oh this should be right here sorry this should be an s down there uh, and number one, f of x is equal to <clears throat> natural log of 1 plus x squared. So that's what we're going to differentiate first, the natural log of 1 plus x squared. One. So I want to find f prime of x. So what rule am I going to use here? Definitely the derivative of natural log that we just found. But anything else? Yeah, this is a chain rule problem. Exactly. <clears throat> so uh, my outside function, outside, and my inside function uh, are what? What's my inside function? Yeah, is pretty clearly just what's inside of the natural log, right? One plus x squared. We're going to see at the end of class a function where it's not so clear what's outside and inside. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I'm leaving it there. All right. And then my outside function is pretty clearly just natural log of x, right? So I'm going to need the derivatives of these, d dx, d dx. 
So what's the derivative of one plus x squared with respect to x? 2x, perfect. And what's the derivative with respect to, uh, uh, to sorry, derivative with respect to x of natural log of x? One over x, that's right. <clears throat> so f prime of x then, we have everything we need. Well, I want the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside. So I'm going to get 1 over 1 plus x squared and then times the derivative of the inside times 2x. Okay. And if you want, I usually write this as 2x over 1 plus x squared. Usually. I write this function all the time. No, that's a joke. I don't. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Cool. Number two. Number two is a good one. Number two. We've got sine of t, g of t is sine of t times the natural log of t squared. We want to find the derivative with respect to t. So what rule do I need to use here? Product yeah, product rule. Don't whisper it. Shout it from the from the rooftops. We huh? so <laughs> We got sine of t times natural log of t. That's definitely a pro natural log of t squared. That's definitely a product rule. So t prime of t. Again, we can color code using SU blue and SU red if we want. So G prime of T says, take the derivative first of the blue function, the first function. Uh, so what's the derivative of sine of T? Cosine of T, very good. And then I will leave the red function alone, natural log of T squared. <clears throat> and then I will do plus, now I will leave the blue function alone, sine of t, and I will take the derivative of the red function. Derivative of natural log of t squared. Ah, perfect. Yes, and how did you, how did you get that? Yes, perfect, perfect. You could, you could use the chain rule on there. You could absolutely use the chain rule. What is much simpler to do is to say, well, my rules for logarithms say I can bring that two there out in front. That's not a derivative. This is not, that, that is not a derivative. That's just your rules for logarithm. Okay. So we can rewrite this function originally as two times the sine of t times the natural log of t. Okay. So when you take the derivative of natural log of two natural log of t, you're just getting two divided by t. Okay. So this is equal to, <clears throat> oops, this is equal to cosine of t times the natural log of t squared plus two sine of t divided by t. Now, did I need to be extra careful there anywhere? In bringing that square out in front as a two, what were we, what did we assume? That t is not equal to zero, and in particular that t is actually greater than zero, right? Because you have to, you're only plugging in positive numbers into the natural log. But if you just leave t squared, then the only number you can't plug into that is t equals zero. Okay, so in this particular case, if you use the chain rule on natural log of t squared, 
If you do the chain rule, you're going to get 1 over t squared times 2t. I encourage you to write that out for yourself to, plot, to verify it for yourself, which is the same thing just as 2 over t. So when taking the derivative, I don't need to be as careful. If you got here, let me do some of this. If you got to here <clears throat> and you wrote this as 2 cosine of t times the natural log of t plus 2 sine of t divided by t, well, technically, that's a different function. Technically, you can't plug in negative t's into that. And you can plug in negative t's into this. Okay? This is a very technical point that I'm not going to like count you off on an exam for. Um, but for anyone who they, they told me to encourage you guys to be math majors. <laughs> so for anyone who wants to be a math major, this is a, the technical kind of point that you would want to consider. That natural log of t squared is only equal to 2 natural log of t when t is positive. Okay. And so technically, if you do that, you, if you if you did that, you would want to add an absolute value of t. But I'm just going to leave my answer as th this line right here and avoid any sort of uh, weirdness. Okay. <clears throat> Questions? Okay, and then problem three was h of s equals natural log of one plus e to the minus s, I think, maybe. Yes. We want to find the derivative with respect to s. So, I know, I know people are going to want to do this. I know people are going to want to say that this is equal to, this is not equal to what I'm about to write. Uh, but I know someone in, is going to want to write that this is equal to the natural log of 1 plus the natural log of e to the minus s. That is not true. That is not true in the slightest. Do not write this on an exam because this is not equal to it, to that. The original function here is as simplified as you can be already. And that's what we have to differentiate. Okay. So do not write this. That only works if you're multiplying the stuff inside, not adding. Okay, <clears throat> so we need to find h prime of s. So how am I going to do that? Yeah, this is just a chain rule problem, right? So I need to know what is my inside function and what is my outside function? Inside, outside. Eventually, after you do hundreds of these problems, you'll just be able to see what's the inside, what's the outside, and just write it down. But I'll keep writing inside and outside for the next couple of weeks. So <clears throat> inside, what's the inside function here? 1 plus e to the negative s. Perfect. 1 plus e to the negative s. What's the outside function? Natural log of x. Mm, natural log of s. Yes, perfect. Perfect. So <clears throat> I'm going to need the derivatives of these things. So. Uh, let's do the derivative of the outside first. What's the derivative with respect to s of natural log of s? 1 over s. Perfect. Then I'm not going to need the derivative with respect to s of 1 plus e to the negative s. Isn't that just e to the negative s? It's close. E. I'm missing something though. What do I technically need here? Is e to the negative s? Um, that's not something, that's not just a basic function that we know the derivative of, right? What would I need to be able to differentiate that? 
Yeah, you need two chains on this one, right? You need two chains. So <clears throat> if you do use the chain rule again to differentiate e to the negative s, well, your outside function is going to be e to the s, and your inside function is going to be negative s. And the, so the derivative of the inside is just negative one. So if you go through all the work to save time, I'm going to have, let you guys do that on your own. If you go through the work of this second chain rule, you'll find that you'll get e to the negative s times negative one. Okay. Yeah, the inside is just going to be negative s because differentiating one is just zero, right? <laughs> so the the derivative, the only derivative derivative that you need the chain rule for is for e to the negative s. <clears throat> okay, so h prime of s then. Well, I'm going to get the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside. So one over one plus e to the negative s, then times the derivative of the inside times minus e to the minus s. Okay. And if you want, this is just negative e to the negative s over one plus e to the negative s. Do we have any questions on that? Another way you could find the derivative of the inside without using the chain rule, e to the negative s is one over e to the s, right? So you could write it as one plus one over e to the s and then use the quotient rule. However, you prefer to do that. This is our final answer for three. All right, and this is the last problem that we have. So I got here with enough time. So find the equation of the line tangent to the graph of the function f of x equals x to the x at x equals 2.5. Okay, x to the x. At x equals 2.5. So we're trying to find this tangent line. Oops. Okay. So what two things do I need for the equation of a line? Yes, I need the derivative, the slope, uh, and, a, and a point, right? And you're exactly right. Right, the slope is going to be f prime of something, and the point's going to be what? Or what's the x coordinate going to be at least? 2.5. 2.5. And the y coordinate is going to be? 2.5. Yeah, 2.5 to the 2.5. That's super annoying. So, <clears throat> check. So, uh, 2.5 to the 2.5. If I calculate that really quick, 2.5 to the 2.5. Leaving it as 2.5 to the 2.5 on an exam is fine, by the way. Oh, thank you we get 9.88 about. So this is, we're going to say for simplicity that this is 2.5, 9.88. Okay, so now I need the slope at this point. So I'm going to take F prime of 2.5. And now here's the tricky thing. How do I find the derivative of x to the x? 
it, if it's a chain rule, chain rule is not a bad guess. If it is the chain rule though, then I need to find an outside and an inside. But here's the, here's the catch is that both of them are kind of outside and inside at the same time. There's not one thing that I'm doing to X first, right? I'm taking X and I'm raising it to itself. So it's not clear at all how to write this as a composition as it currently stands. Power rule only works if I have X to some constant, like X to the N. That's also not a bad guess, but if you, if you tried to use the power rule, then you'd end up with a wrong thing. Uh, I think you're on a, uh, the train the, the, or the track that I, that I want you to be on. The train of thought. There we go. <laughs> train of train of tracks. So we're going to need, this is weird. This is a very weird function. We need to rewrite this. Yeah. Oh, 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 yes, exactly right. Exactly right. We do, when we had two to the x and we didn't know how to differentiate that yet, well, we said, well, why don't I just take the natural log of two to the x and then I'll simplify and then I'll raise it back up to get a new version. That's what we're doing here. I'm going to take natural log of x to the x which for positive x, and notice that I only drew the graph for positive x. <clears throat> this is equal to x times the natural log of x. Perfect. Then, I mean, I can't just work with this because this is a totally different function. I need to undo what I did. I need to undo applying that logarithm so I get back to the original function I was working with. So. To undo a logarithm, e exactly. Perfect. You guys are killing it. So, when you do that, the left hand side, this is just x to the x. The right hand side, all of a sudden, is something that is much easier to work with. So if I want to find f prime of x, I can just differentiate this guy. Yeah. So we started off just by saying, well, you, we started off just by saying, if I apply a logarithm, then I can move that. That x in the exponent of x is really getting on my nerves. So the idea is, let's get it out of there with logarithm. So I, those logarithms, I apply them so that I can simplify and then I undo them. So that's where, that's where these E's come from. The natural log comes from me wanting to simplify this. The E comes from me having, having to undo what I did. So I'm working with the same function. How do someone asks? How do we apply the natural log to one side only? You can't if you if you want to apply the natural log to one side only, then you're changing one side of the equation, and you're no longer have equality. But yeah, that's a good question. It, if I just give you something that's like y equals the natural log of x, you can work with that. But if you ever apply the natural log to one side of the equation, you have to apply it to both. We just did. No, I applied the natural log to both, both sides here. Right? We started off with x to the x. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm just trying, I'm starting off just with x to the x, and I want to get to something easier to work with. So I apply natural log of x to the x. Really, really, yes, there's an f of x over here that I also took a natural log of. 
that's sort of hidden in the shadows. <clears throat> But then once I undo that, then we still end up with something that's true because I am working with, I'm doing the same thing to both sides. So really, yes, if you want, there's also an E there. But the, but the key takeaway is that this is XBX rewritten in a more workable form. So I wanna find then F prime, <clears throat> F prime of 2.5. Well, that means I need to find F prime of X. And remember, F of X in a nicer form is E to the X times the natural log of X. Okay, so this is another chain rule problem. The outside and the inside are much easier to find though than with just looking at X to the X. So the inside function here is what? Perfect. X times the natural log of X. The outside function? E, e to the X. Yeah, perfect. So uh, I need derivatives here. What's the derivative with respect to X of E to the X? E to the X. Perfect. And the derivative with respect to X of natural log or X times natural log of X. How would you find it? Careful. Is it it's not a double chain rule, it's a product rule, but we do need to use another rule inside of this chain rule for the product rule. Yeah. So I need the product rule here. So I need to take the derivative of the first function. So I'll just, I'll get X. The derivative of X is just one. And then I'll leave natural log of X alone. Plus, <clears throat> Then I'll leave X alone and I'll take the derivative of natural log of X. So what's the derivative of natural log of X? One over X, perfect. And so we end up with those X's cancel. We end up with one plus natural log of X for that derivative. Okay, so F prime of X, we have everything we need is equal to, well, I need the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside. So that's gonna be e to the x natural log of x. And then times the derivative of the inside times one plus natural log of x. And that's perfectly fine to leave it like that. We could also rewrite this as, what was that? What was e to the x natural log of x? Yeah, that was x to the that was x to the x, right? This is x to the x times one plus natural log of x. And here we can see if we had just tried to use either the power rule or our exponential rule, both of those would have given us something a little bit wrong. It would have been close, but it would have been a little bit off. Okay. So then F prime of 2.5 is 2.5 to the 2.5 times, let me move this, times one plus the natural log of 2.5, which is approximately, if I plug it into a calculator, making sure I don't make any typos. 2.5 to the 2.5 times one plus natural log of 2.5. 18.94 about. So plugging it all, putting it all together, finishing this problem, what did we wanna find at the start? The equation of the tangent line, right? So now I can do that because I have my point. My point is here, 2.5, 9.88. So my point is, I'll do y minus y1 
9.88, or you could leave it as 2.5 to the 2.5 if you want. Equals uh, M, the slope, 18.94 times X minus X1, which is just 2.5. And we're done. I, I felt like, uh, I feel like uh, I want to go back to the question of applying natural log to one side of an equation. You can do anything that you want to one side of the equation as long as you either do two things, as long as you do it to both sides or as long as you undo it. Because that's another thing that you'll see when you complete the square. Some people like to add one and then subtract one so you don't actually change anything. Um, so that I, that's a slight change to the answer is you, you can do anything to one side of an equation as long as you either do it to the other side or as long as you eventually undo it, which we did that by taking E to the natural log uh, of, of that stuff. Okay. okay, do we have any questions on natural logs? or exponentials. You guys did great with both of these. I'm very excited with how, how well you absorbed that. Okay. Thursday and Friday are going to be about related rates. We're going to be back in uh, the required text for that. Um, so if you do read ahead and you feel overwhelmed, don't worry. It's just the chain rule. That's all, really all it is. We're gonna we're gonna be working through that together Thursday and Friday. Okay, so if there's no questions, please wipe down your desk before you go, uh, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.